welcome to learning more about the talent management industry inside China. We're going to be talking to you a little bit about Hydric, pronounced Hydric, and Struggles. They are a talent management firm operating globally, and we are going to be visiting their China office. Let me give you a little background on what on earth talent management is. When you have a company that wants to fill positions, you ask your internal recruiter, hey, go find me this position. Well, sometimes your internal recruiting team is not quite equipped to find really high level executives or even really specialty technical positions. So you go to a firm like Hydric and Struggles and they go out into the market, use their special knowledge of the market and find the talent that you need. A couple things to know about this industry. There are a couple of major competitors. He's going to tell us a little bit about the competitors in this industry. All right. So we're visiting uh, with George Huang, who is the managing partner of the uh, Shanghai office. Uh, and he actually came from one of the top five executive search firms in the world, Russell Reynolds Associates. Uh, and Hydrogen Struggles is one of the top five, and the other three are Corn Ferry, Spencer Stewart, and uh, Egon Zedner. Uh, their goals and values, I'm going to read you their uh, vision and, and the main values that they uh, run their company by. Their vision is they're committed to serving our clients as trusted advisors, providing diversified solutions across executive search, leadership consulting, and culture shaping. Those last three things are the main capabilities and, and services that they, that they provide. Um, and the values that they uh, run their company by are win as one firm, which is they work as one firm and succeed through collaboration, inclusion, and value in diverse points of view. They own the results, which they work to make things happen and own the outcome. They grow with their clients. Our clients inspire them to create innovative solutions and exceed expectations, and they always act with integrity, which is obviously good. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about their uh, uh, composition or the way that their organization is structured. Um, they basically have a few different career paths, starting with individuals with less than two years of experience, research associates, um, and they're basically uh, working with teams to offer insights, interpretations, and direction based on knowledge gained through their experience. Um, associates, which is after that, uh, individuals with more than two years experience in executive search or professional services or the like. Uh, and uh, after that is advanced professionals, which is individuals with more than 10 years of experience in uh, executive search or professional services. And within the advanced professionals, there's engagement managers who, that are responsible for managing client engagements, there's principles which they see ex oversee execution of all phases of the search process, uh, except for C-suite jobs. And then there's partners who lead the search industry in what it means to be an outstanding executive search partner to their clients and candidates. Uh, their customers. Um, hey, Carrie, I'm going to interrupt you real am quick. Am I going too long? No, you're good. Okay. Just want to show our audience a quick little diagram of the customers and suppliers in uh, in China. This is China, right here, and Carrie's gonna tell us who specifically within China are the suppliers of talent. So the main suppliers uh, of talent that they're hiring internally are gonna be Chinese universities, um, and then otherwise it's companies across all industries, um, but specifically they uh, are, uh, they provide uh, executive search for consumer markets, education, nonprofit, and social enterprise, energy, financial services, healthcare and life sciences, uh, professional services, and the technology industry. Uh, yeah. Cool. Thank you. So we're looking at a lot of different sources of talent, placing in a lot of different types of industries. Um, most notably, a lot of their customers are multinational corporations who are looking to build their local talent bench. We've talked a lot in class about the need for local knowledge to be in leadership positions, and this is definitely the case in China. Tyler's going to tell you a little bit about what the Chinese employees are looking for in their leadership positions that we're looking for. 
Yeah, so at Hydric and Struggles, they spend a lot of money doing research on what the local markets look for uh, in their leadership teams. In China in particular, uh, they look for a celebrity type leader, which is someone who can inspire their employees. Uh, the employees kind of build an identity with the company and with their leader, and so they're looking for someone that's really charismatic, someone that can lead a vision, uh, and someone that, that uh, inspires them to do better than, than what they've done before. Um, and, and I think we had an example. Oh yeah, that's right. We got our buddy Richard Branson over here. That's the type of uh, uh, leader that they look for. Someone larger than life um, and that has a celebrity status. So Perfect. Right. Um, just taking a look at the macroeconomic factors that we're dealing with in uh, this industry, we've got, in summary, really low supply. We've got, you know, really, uh, the, the term that you may hear is a shallow talent bench. Um, there's not a lot to choose from. And then you've got a really high demand. You've got multinational corporations wanting to expand their operations and can't really do it because their leadership team doesn't really know how to get local employees truly engaged and locals are best at doing that. Jeff is going to tell us a little bit about some of the more microeconomic factors that are impacting Hydric and struggles. All right, thanks Maria. So we have done an analysis of Q1 of this year as well as we've looked at the last five years um, across the balance sheet, income statement, and cash flow statement for this company. And we found that for each of these statements, the overall it's very positive. They are, in all the key metrics for each one, they're, they're positive, they're consistent, and they're growing. That said, our biggest concern is what future growth might look like. They have a very, very abysmal net margin. It's like one to two percent, um, even though that is growing, even though it's stable. And so looking at future growth, they rely heavily on being financed outside of that. And Tyler, did you have some thoughts you wanted to add on that? So one of the other things that when we look at the financials for this company that, that we see is that they have really small margins. And so they're not contributing a lot of income to their equity uh, on a yearly basis, which means they're financing their growth mainly with debt. And so there's some concerns there that uh, that's not sustainable. And so uh, we recommend that the management team look at ways of expanding those margins, becoming more profitable, and returning more money to uh, shareholder equity. In conclusion, they're growing. They've got a really high demand industry. And we're really excited to meet with their leadership team. Um, this is definitely an area that we've talked a lot about in class. This this growing anticipation and excitement around talent in China. Thank you. See you in Shanghai. See you in Shanghai. Shanghai. Ah!